Splinter's use case. So very, very good afternoon. Uh, I think screen sharing, I'm not pinned to the chat. Yes. So let me start sharing the screen. So very, very good afternoon to you. And uh, let me introduce myself to you and uh, thank the committee for giving me a chance to present my use case in Hackathon. This is, uh, I am doing consultancy majorly in GST. So, uh, Sumiji, what I found that many of the professionals, chart accountants all across are struggling with one thing that is how to actually identify where the reverse charge mechanism is applicable or not. See, while creating this PPT also, I have used the AI tools. This uh, diagram has been made with the, the AI tool called napkin. But when I was uh, having the thought and brainstorming about it, I found that when reverse charge mechanism we talk about, people find it very tough these days because the applicability dates from this seven year implementation of GST has been very uh, difficult and complex to interpret. So as on the screen, you can see there are many of the time frequent amendments happening when things are getting under reverse charge, getting not. Though what I thought that there should be a one-stop solution where you just feed in the user information and you can just at a click of a button understand whether reverse charge is applicable to you or not. And if in case it is applicable, then what all compliances do you need to make? Make If it is not applicable, you need to understand why it is not applicable and what itself in the transaction will change and it will make applicable and form part of the reverse charge in GST. So uh, looking at the frequent amendments happening, interpretational issues, classification matter, the complex chains, the compliance burden, ITC doubts, and there can be time consuming and return mismatches. I thought about this one-stop solution using the AI. So I have been using this uh, AI technology called uh, CAGPT. When we were reading about AI tools, we have been finding that the there is hallucination chances. And when we read about CA GPT, I found that will be giving me better G, uh, results from the chat GPT. So I tried both the things in chat GPT as well and CA GPT. And I was fortunate that CA GPT is being created by the Institute and it was giving me the most appropriate results desired. I then used note LM notebook LM for defining the prompts and summarizing the data accordingly. Then I tried using the LMA coder also for coding and uh, where I could find that the codes are not generating appropriately. Hallucination we talk about in AI that was mostly there. So I tried with another substitute AI tool called Cloud AI where I could uh, make the code and uh, it was giving me the most appropriate results which I'll discuss later. <clears throat> when I give you the detailed walkthrough and then I'll show you the tool, how it worked. Let us understand when we generated the data. First, we need to understand how and when the reverse charge is applicable. So I need to have the backup updated file for generating the end result. So I used GPT also, chat GPT, but there were the wrong outputs being shown. So I moved to CA GPT where I generated one Excel. The Excel, then I... Uh, made conversion to PDF where that formed part of the coder, which is the cloud AI and where I could refine the five versions. It is not only about what I understood AI that you must not make it a complex prompt at the first go. Generate it, refine it stage by stage and I then used different versions. Moving further, I started with this prompt. Let me show you this prompt practically how it was happening. I generated this PDF list. This is the PDF and I uploaded. This is the Excel, which I used where the reverse charge is applicable. When is it applicable? How and circulars everything. This is the Excel, which is what type of supplier recipient you are. And I, this all, I have got the input from CAGPT. Let me show you. This is the list I got from CAGPT. When I gave this prompt, I got this output. Then I 
asked GPT, is it the latest list? It told me that it is yes, updated, including all the commercial RCMs as well. Then I made the backup file also, getting all the notifications. And then I downloaded the convert PDF and Excel files. Then moving to cloud, I just uploaded this PDF wherein I asked in by implementing these checks, create a code to determine the applicability based on provided information, ask for the user information in drop downs. So in the right side of the screen, you can see the first version where I was having very less and in reverse charge, if you understand, there are applicability dates differ from one date to another. Then when this created a first version, this is in the right screen. It then told me what all is there in the first version. When I found the defaults and they were correctly working, I then added one more functionality to this, that if the date of RCM is on or before the applicability date from the above RCM data, add a brief write up also and check it whether how the user knows when the same becomes applicable and why is it in above data entered is not applicable. So it should tell you both whether is it applicable or not. Then came this interactive tracker in the version two, where the date of supply also gets added. Then I checked this, tested this, and I wanted to add more information to this, that based on the type of service, if the service applicability is not true under RCM, then tell the parameters of it applicable as a note below, so that the user finds the mistake in its selection, which would have made it applicable under RCM. So I was just refining the versions and then I created this version where I was getting more information to this. Then in the last, I also praised the AI that this version is very good. Also add notification number in the last for the user to have the data source. So because we understood when we were doing our, our AI that the data reference and data source also the user needs to be having so that he can more genuinely trust your tool. And finally, we came up with this tool, which is wherein you just select, let's say a director services, or let's say the commercial property, which is the most common thing that is asked. Your supplier is, let us say a director, a recipient is, let's say a company. And let us assume your applicability or the transaction date is on 22nd of April. Let us go. It shows based on your selection, the RCM is not applicable. Why it is not applicable in your case? Because required parameters is that it should be from unregistered person to registered person, not from a director to body corporate. The notification is applicable from 10th of October. Your supply date is okay. Notification number is this. Now let us see if we make the correct selections that supply from unregistered to registered person. It says supply from registered person to unregistered person. Unregistered to registered person. See, now it says RCM is applicable. It gives you a green prompt, which makes you better identify more visually appealing. It says your detailed information, it is applicable. Key facts are there. Responsibility of the recipient is this. And what are the key compliances that you need to make under the reverse charge? So I wanted to make it a one-stop solution. Where in the last two minutes. Yes. Where I could actually manage to understand what are the tools, how the AI works, and it can be adding value to the professionals. Coming back, I'll just show you one thing. These were the steps that I have shown in the proper aspects. Now, what this AI tool needs to be kept in mind while implementing. It is no doubt uh, time saving and effort saving. Accuracy has been tested. The tool is available just to all. However, there is one thing that is periodic updates. Since the GST is getting updated time to time, the backup data on the Excel needs to be updated from time to time so that the source data remains accurate. This is what I have and I'll be updating this tool, refining it tool, like adding a reset button or multiple things, which will make it more user friendly. Oh. Thank you so much for my presentation and giving me the chance to this. Thank you, Navya. Very, uh, very aptly explained. And we have brought in the concept of Gigo garbage in garbage out. So you have used data shorting and all kinds of methods possible. So very well presented and that too in a very simple drop down formula method so that anybody can use it in a very easy access accessible manner. 
Yes. So very nice presentation. Uh, just just wanted to understand the drop down mechanism which you brought, uh, built in. What is the platform? It is all done in Claude. Yes, it is all done in Claude. There was one website or AI tool that is LMA Coder. Okay. I tried with it, but it was giving me very hallucinated and abrupt codes. No, the drop down was uh, done in Claude itself, right? Yes. I show you if I if you allow me, I'll show you the first prompt again. When I gave this first prompt, I gave it in the first prompt itself that it should be ask the user for the information in the drop downs. Okay. Because okay. I wanted it is to just like my GPT in Claude, but again in a drop down format. Yes. Because I wanted no one should go here and there and the information feeding should be appropriate. Very, very, very nicely presented. And one thing which he has very correctly pointed out that you need to come constantly upgrade or update the uh, repository so that it gives you correct and acceptable answers. Yes, because the uh, polishing of the skills needs right. to be done and that is what AI and HI, human inter intelligence need to get collaborated.